You just joined the cast of The Flight Attendant for season two as a series regular. How does that feel, especially after the amount of success season one had? I mean, it was exciting, right? You, um, I can think as an actor, it's an interesting dynamic where when you do new projects, one of the big things you have on your mind is all outside of doing the best possible job you can is if it can find an audience, and how people are gonna to respond to it. When you saw, join something like The Flight Attendant that already has such a committed fan base, that's like one less thing that you have to think about. Then it just becomes about the actual art. So it felt like an exciting opportunity to not really be in a position where you have to think about bringing people in and kind of just coming in and uh, providing more for the people that are already there. Okay, and had you seen season one before you joined season two? Yeah, yeah, I was a huge fan of the first season. It was one of those things where I didn't necessarily know fully what the show was about when I first, first watched it. And I didn't feel like, I don't know, I didn't know if I felt like it was something I was going to be specifically that I would respond to. But like the trailers and the little glimpses and everything I'd seen felt very uh, cinematic. Mm. And interesting and kind of like a, a unique in a way. So I ended up checking out the first season real time and just got hooked. So then uh -huh. when I got the call to join, it was incredible because it's not often you get to join something you're like truly a fan of already. It was like a full circle moment. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. For my soul, for watching it to then making it. Exactly. And what about your character do you like the most? Do you find him relatable to you in any way? Yeah, my character is relatable to me personally, I think, in a lot of ways. The big thing is he truly loves his job and he takes it very serious. He loves his career, as do I. And that, for me, was like a really great way into it. Like, OK, this person is obsessive about excelling in his job. The only difference is the stakes for his are far more higher than mine in real life. But I still relate to it. Definitely. And as the show progresses, there's a specific moment where their scene happens between your character and Cassie, which eventually causes things within her personal life to definitely push her over the limit. So how will this scene affect the working dynamic and individual character development? Well, I think this scene that you're referring to, if it's the scene I think you're talking about, uh, it affects the working dynamic in very complicated ways. Yeah. And I think it does, one of the things that this show does really well where you arrive at a point in our story and it feels like an end point, mm -hmm. but really it's just the beginning of a whole new world of problems. And right. So that scene kind of serves as that. Like I think it's, it feels we arrive somewhere and then from there there's a whole new desti destination ahead as a result. And I want to switch gears a little bit. So your film, A Lot of Nothing. South by was a couple months ago. Yeah, uh, it was great. It was incredible. It was an idea I kind of been carrying around in my mind and my heart since like 2018. Mm. There was a lot of blood, sweat and tears into like creating it. So to get to um, see it with a live audience for the first time, mm. it was that collective laugh of a packed theater from something that I came up with years ago in my dining room, on my, on my dining room table. It was, it was incredible. It was one of those moments I'll cherish and remember for the rest of my life. And how long did the entire project take to create? I mean, for my idea, it was like I said, it was like around like 2018 or something like that. Maybe even sooner when I first started like having the thoughts, maybe even 2016 or 17. And then went into production and like, 2019, I want to say, or and then the world. I'm from the worst with dates. What you hear right now is the fact that I'm really terrible with dates. But <laughs> several years, production itself of the movie was like a year and a half worth of work itself of just shooting the film because we got shut down due to the pandemic. Mm. So we were shooting, then we got shut down for 15 months, then we came back and editing and all that stuff. So it was years and years out of my life of like,
trying to get this story into the world. And the film centers around an upper middle class couple who decides to take justice into their own hands and basically seek payback towards their neighbor. Um, what was the inspiration for that? Well, the inspiration for it was a combination of things. So first and foremost, uh, love, right? Mm -hmm. Relationships very complex complicated and intriguing to me because you think about love that's the thing we've since shakespeare everybody's been writing about love since the beginning of time and we still don't know anything new about it <laughs> and so i felt like it was interesting to explore a marriage in the micro level but then looking at the macro things in the world that are going on and how those two impact each other and so those things in the world just kind of inspired by events that happen that get everybody very upset and riled up and we all want to do something but what does that look like most of the time it's us going to social media and making a soapbox post about it mm -hmm. so i wanted to say what happens if you take a couple that decide to go past the soapbox social media post and actually engage are we even equipped to do that and the answer was no <laughs> And you already mentioned it, like over the past few years, we've seen that shift in how people around the world have come together and basically speak against injustices and demand change. So how important was it for you to implement that aspect into the film? Oh, it was incredibly important because it's one of those things where, if you really think about the interesting thing here is the fact that I had this idea before, like, George Floyd situation that happened. These things that people were so upset and it just galvanized people in a greater degree in terms of like quantity than we'd ever seen. So I feel like this has been bubbling and it's something that's very much in our social consciousness mm. about like, what do we do? So the opportunity for me to potentially and hopefully entertain while posing even more questions about what do we do? And then often, why don't we do? Because we're all so caught up in our own microcosms and what's happening in there that it becomes increasingly more difficult. I remember Jared Carmichael had this joke. Uh, I saw him live like several years ago. It was the first time I'd ever seen him. And he was a part of his lineup of other comics. And I remember him saying, you know, I really want to go to the protest but I need my Saturdays. And I thought that was just like, I thought that was such a genius bit of commentary. It was so real. And I'm just fascinated with that exploration of like who we are and where we are and where we say we want to be and what needs to happen between this and that. A lot of things that ultimately prevent it. That's why the movie's called what it is. It's a, it's a lot of nothing. So there's a lot of nothing that's between us and the things that could actually bring us together and closer and be in our fullest version of ourselves. And you mentioned questions. So one of the questions I thought when reading everything about your film and everything was, do you feel like sometimes people need to take matters into their own hands when official channels or organizations are less than effective? And I'm talking about in terms of seeking justice. Oh, that's a volatile question. That's a very controversial question. Do I think people should take justice into their own hands? I guess that means, um, to me, kind of got to even question and wonder what justice even looks like. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Is it revenge? Is it redemption? Is it vindication? Uh, which is, a, you know, it's all very potentially dangerous things. But what I will say, I'm not like a politician or a person that should issue directives to the public, but what I do think we can all stand to uh, gain a lot if there was a greater sense of individual and collective accountability when things go wrong. Mm. So a bit of the answer is yes, in short. I think we should find ways to be more involved to the highest degree possible and the greatest capacity towards moving things into a direction that we believe in our heart is morally correct. I know that you have a vast amount of interest, like photography, film, acting, you have your hands on a lot of stuff. So what's something you keep in mind when you're, you are developing a project or creating one? Like, how do you maintain it all? That's a great question. How do I maintain all this stuff? A big thing. <laughs> I gotta give um, credit to the team. 
Like I have like a phenomenal group of people around me from like some of my production companies, scalable content, and my wife who works there with me as well, like Scott Davis and Matt Casaro, and then just hired a new assistant, which is a very, very helpful. Then my agents, managers, publicists, lawyers, there's like a business manager. There's a ton of people around. I think they help me maintain everything. But for me, the through line of it all, everything I do creatively, whether it's doing a photo shoot as a photographer, or making a movie, a feature film, like a lot of nothing, or Starkeisha, the project I did for Hulu, or acting in a flight attendant. It's like, I always kind of go into it with two things in mind, I think. One, I detect there's an element of like creative fulfillment for me at the other side of it. And then there's something that I want to say that I feel compelled to put into the world on some on some level, whether it's an image or a movie, acting, whatever it is, or just things I want to say or explore and then share that exploration with the world. What's next? What do you hope to accomplish, you know, in the next few months or even years? Well, that's an incredible question. Like, what's next? There's so many different things. So, like, there are a few things in the television space I'm developing that I'm super excited about. I already started writing my next feature. And um, my next feature, I believe, will be like, in, in, in the best case scenario, it'll be one of the most impactful pieces of cinema ever. Mm-hmm. It's a journey. It's a film that's like very much inspired by the movies that made me be the man that I am. I wanted to try my hand at creating something that gave me an opportunity to tackle some of the themes that they're universally relatable, that hopefully everybody can first of all always be entertained, but then could take these these jewels and these jams that are in this film and like apply it to their life at various stages whenever applicable. Mm-hmm. And developing and hopefully making a photography book soon, do my first exhibition. It's, it's a lot happening. Okay, okay. I definitely, I see the drive. You're going to do it and you're going to do it great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I know you say you're in the process of creating this new this new project. So what is your creative process like? Oh man, my creative process, it varies. It's really weird and unique and it's constantly changing. Uh, I'm going to answer this question like with 1000% candor and honesty. I'm a big, big shower thinker. Like I take really long showers and write in my head while in the shower and then get out the shower and actually like email it to myself. So I have like these long like list of um, like, like I was almost like a, a hashtag I created in my email that whenever I have idea, I email it to all my email accounts in case Gmail fails or Outlook. I send it to every email account that I have to myself as like a note taking before I then go into like the proper uh, screenwriting software. Same thing with photo shoots. Like I'm in the shower and I have ideas and concepts and I just get out and I write it. I wake up all crazy hours. I don't sleep well. Mm-hmm. So I wake up and like lean over and write stuff into my phone that's on the side of the bed. So it's just like this constant, unconventional process of like ideating. And then the structuring of it happens at the desk, either at my studio or at my home office, where I just sit and actually structure out the ideas and get it to something that I could share. Because before I could get it together, it's like a bunch of wild ideas all the time loose like so with the new film i'm writing i know the ending scene i see it in my head i know where it begins and some of the middle when i'm filling in everything else i know the themes and they're like moments there's all these different moments that i'm still connecting and making cohesive i i feel like i'm the same way when i'm in the shower like i'll be like hey siri and then tell her like the notes that i I just start spitting out words and i'm like i know she doesn't even know what i'm talking about Oh, you you might have just hit me with some game. <laughs> I oh, put you on to an idea. <laughs> hey, Siri in the shower and I could just say it out loud. Oh, that's amazing. Exactly. I mean, sometimes she doesn't get the words that I'm trying to get at, but it's okay. I know what I was trying to say. 
So do you forget to say tell Siri when you're done, or do you start singing in the showers so and then you got lyrics in there too? <laughs> <laughs> imagine no like once i'm like all right and that's it and then she'll stop and then afterwards i put all my notes together but the thing is if you have multiple ideas she's gonna make 17 different notes for you she won't add to the one <laughs> really that is i didn't know that was a thing i'm kind of like it's weird because age range wise i'm like i'm a millennial so I grew up with the internet to some degrees, but I'm not like super, super tech savvy. So it's a lot of stuff like Siri. I never use Siri. Like I, I would just type everything. And I have friends that use voice notes all the time. And I'm like, why are you voice noting? You just text, just write the words like everybody else. Oh, that's I, never used, <laughs> I never used an emoji my whole life. Huh, really? Never used an emoji my entire life. My favorite emoji is the laughing emoji with the tears. I use that 10 times a day. <laughs> but how often are you actually laughing at heart in real life? You See? know, that's an amazing question. <laughs> but like, there's something powerful in the, in the consistent exercise of like using truthful words. I don't know. Like, I just, I, I've never used an emoji my whole life. Never. Now it's at a point where. I'll write out the emoji that I would use if I did use emojis when I'm talking to people. I'll be like, insert laughing face. Right, exactly. Dancing, red dress dancing person. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mo, for sitting down and speaking with me today. It was a pleasure, and I loved you in season two. Uh, that was an emphatic love. I appreciate that so much. You see, I meant that from the heart. No emoji could express that. No, I appreciate it. It's been exciting, too, seeing how everybody feel about the show. Like, so far, only the press has seen it. So I'm getting a lot of feedback from press, but I'm really excited to see, like, how the world feels about it. I think my character is, like, an interesting addition to that world. Definitely. I think you are a perfect addition to that world. Thank you so much.